Diabetic equation and the adiabatic flame temperature, uh, we're going to go into uh, the real equations of combustion. Why do we start with the equations? Well, because we're going to do it the French way. Uh, the French way now is that we're going to write the most general equations for combustion. It's going to be big. And then we're going to simplify them afterwards uh, for the different applications. My idea is that uh, most of you are going to be using codes in the future. And I see a lot of students coming back to me saying, uh, we got all these equations in the code, we don't understand what's going on. There's nothing magical about the conservation equations I'm going to write now. And I think it's a good exercise for you to write them at least once in your life so that you're not afraid of them. There's another reason also to write them is that, uh, especially when it comes to uh, energy, uh, there are many ways to write them. And if you look at codes, in most cases, uh, they use different energy equations, and people get confused about what are the assumptions which were used or not. So let's uh, start by the beginning here uh, and see what you guys know about uh, CFD. Because basically what I'm saying now is that uh, I'm going to give you all the equations needed to do computational fluid dynamics for combustion. So before we do that, let's check what you know about CFD for aerodynamics. So typically, if you're working for Airbus and you compute a wing at low speed, uh, you are solving equations. And to solve these equations, you are using variables. So first question is, if you don't have combustion, if you have only air, nothing reacting here, how many variables do you have in practice in a 3D flow? In a 3D flow, who knows that? Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, they are easy. Huh? Some of them are easy. They are the velocities, there are three of them. This everyone knows. What else do you have in a code? How many other variables do you need? One? Two? Well, pressure would be one, yeah. And usually you need density. Now, pressure, it can be pressure or it can be enthalpy or energy, or entropy, or anything. But in general, you have five variables in a compressible flow, which is typically what you find around a, a ring, for example. And the species, you don't care about them because it's only O2 plus N2, for, finished. So you have five variables. How many equations? I think you need five. So what are the five equations you need? You need continuity. You need momentum, and you need an energy equation. Okay. There are three here, one here, one here. So you have five equations, five unknowns, fine. Okay. Of course, um, depending on whether you use P or H or E or T, actually, or the temperature, you need also the equation of state to get all the others from those here, who are here. If you have Rho and T, you can get pressure, you can get enthalpy, etc. So you, those, the dependent variables, there are only five and five equations. Now, you forget about uh, non-reacting flows, you're talking about combustion. In combustion, you will still have to solve for all these variables, and we have to care about composition. The composition, what we call composition in combustion, is the distribution of typically the mass fraction. Most codes will work with mass fraction. Certain codes will wor work with smaller fractions, but mass fraction is a, is a good guess. So typically here, we're going to have n variables, which are the n yk. And n, I told you, can be large. n can be 300. So you see that right away, if you had a problem or if you had a code which could solve five variables. And if you go to combustion, now instead of five equations, you need to solve for 305 equations. So it's a different world. And the codes which are doing non-reacting flow are absolutely not suited for reacting flow. If you go to Airbus or to Boeing, the codes which they use around an aircraft have nothing to do with the codes which are used at Rolls-Royce or Stecma to compute the inside of an engine. They are completely different. One of the reasons is that in the codes for aerodynamics, people are going to say we have air and only air. 
they will use a constant CP, they will use a constant, um, uh, uh, constant constant, if I can say so, in the equation of state. In combustion, you need to do something completely different. So the codes are completely different, and very few codes actually can do the two things. So our problem now in combustion is that we're going to have 5 plus n variables, and I'm going to need to write for you 5 plus n equations. Obviously. So uh, some of these equations are easy, and some of them are not so easy. I'm going to start by the easy ones. The first one is continuity. Continuity is the same with and without combustion. Combustion does not create mass, it does not uh, destroy mass, mass is conserved. And here, rho is the mean density I have defined half an hour ago, and u is the mean velocity. It's the velocity of the gas, the one you would measure, for example, in an experiment. Uh, just for notation, um, I'm going to mix notation throughout this course, so this thing you're going to see it some written like this, sometimes you're going to see it written like that. The notation here means we have to do the sum for x, y, and z. So it's d over dx of rho u plus d over dy of rho v plus d over dz of rho w. And I'm going to mix them all the time, so don't complain. It's, uh, uh, sometimes it's easier to use one notation, sometimes it's easier to use another one. Okay, now, the, the demonstration I'm going to do now uh, can take um, hours if we don't do... Uh, don't do it uh, in a smart way. So I just want to, to show you a few things, uh, a few manipulations to simplify the equations. The first thing I want to show you is that some of you who have followed already a course about compressible flow know that we're going to have a lot of expression like this one. F is going to be something, a quantity, and you're going to have to play with quantities like that one. So it's the change of rho multiplied by F plus the flux of rho F. So it's the gradient of rho uf. This thing that you can write also like this, d over dt of rho f plus d over dxy of rho uif. Okay, it's the same thing. I just changed this expression to use the Einstein notation convention. Um, and then this guy, I can, that's what I'm doing in this, I can split into four parts and use the continuity equation. How do you do that? Well, this quantity here, you can put uh, rho df dt here plus rho ui df dxi and keep all the other terms here, f d rho dt plus d over dxy of rho ui. And this term, because of continuity, is zero. So you see that in the end, in a problem like this, using continuity, we can write this thing as rho df dt plus ui df dxi which sometimes we write also like this, df dt, where this thing here is the total derivative or the Lagrangian derivative. It's the variation of f when you follow the flow. You have seen that, I hope, before. Um, if you are traveling on a fluid particle, the changes that you see is not df dt, of course, it's df dt plus the convection term. So it's what we call dfdt with a big D. And this, when you use these notations here to manipulate the equations, that's what I'm going to do now, it's much easier. You will see that instead of having something big like this, it's of a reasonable size. So, the first thing I want to, uh, to do here is just to rewrite this guy, actually, to, to give you first... Uh, 
the first use of this uh, simple link here. If I write these two terms here, <coughs> or these two here, I can write this equation like this, dO dt plus u i dO dx i equal minus rho du i dx y. It's the same equation, okay? I've just split this term in two, or this term in two. And this term here is dO dt. So I'm going to keep this equation because I'm going to need it somehow later. Put it here. DUI dxi here, it's du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz. This is the divergence of the velocity. There is a very simple uh, interpretation for that. Is that uh, if you travel if you are traveling in a combustion chamber, so you enter the combustion chamber, uh, and you follow a particle in the combustion chamber, your derivative of density will follow exactly this equation. So typically, you will get warm at some point, your temperature will go up. If your temperature goes up, your density will go down. Okay? Density going down means you're going to expand. You need more space for the same mass. So what will happen? Well, you will create a divergence of velocity. That means you will push the gases nearby to be allowed to, to get the same mass at the same place, but with a different density. So this equation actually has an interesting uh, interpretation in terms of physics. It just so shows right away the link between the divergence of the velocity field and combustion. dO dt is like dt dt. It's the changes of temperature. Okay, so that means if you have... Uh, a continuity equation for non-reacting gases, it's the same for reacting gases. That's good news. At least one simple thing in this world. Um, it's not going to be like this in a few minutes. Um, second equation is momentum. And here, and it's the last time today, we are lucky because momentum is the same with and without combustion. And you have seen it before, so I'm going to write it down. It's getting more interesting. It's d dt of rho ui. i is 1, 2, or 3. Those are the three directions in space. Plus d over dxj of rho ui uj plus dp dx i equal d over dx j of tau ij. Okay. You've seen this before. Maybe you forgot it already, but uh, you've seen it. So you have the pressure term here. Here, tau ij. What is tau ij? Well, it's an interesting animal. It's minus two-thirds of the viscosity multiplied by the divergence of the velocity plus viscosity multiplied by dui dxj plus duj dxi. And this very nice person has a name. It's the viscous stress. And the fact that you have combustion or no combustion does not play any role. You get the same equation. So that's, that's good. Um, the thing which is not good about this equation is that it's too complicated for me, so I'm going to simplify it. You see, for example, this term here is nothing else than rho dui dt. <laughs> Using the magical notation I've just shown you five minutes ago. And these two terms, it's uh, convenient to combine them together using the total stress tensor, sigma ij. Sigma ij is uh, tau ij minus the pressure multiplied by delta ij. This is the Kronecker symbol. It's 1 if e i equal to j, and it's 0 if i is different. So if you, you can put these two things together, and using this notation, you obtain rho dui dt equal d over dxi c 
sigma ij. This must be a j here. Same equation, different notation, okay? And sigma ij is what we call the total stress tensor. Which contains both the viscous stress tensor and the pressure term. Um, now I have finished the easy part. I've got four equations, one here. I've got three equations here for y equal one, two, and three. I still miss uh, all the equations for the species and the equation for the temperature. Now, of course, uh, the equation for the species, you have not seen it before. Uh, it's a continuity equation for the mass of species K. The mass of species K is not conserved now because the mass of species K can disappear through combustion or appear because of combustion. And then the last equation we need to derive is the enthalpy. Uh, 